Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be focusing on last minute GCSE biology tips and particularly what you need to do to boost your grade in biology and in the papers in terms of the equations, questions that may come up and just general concepts. So the first tip is a bit general, but definitely applies to biology as well as all other subjects, whatever you need to watch videos for. And that is to not be afraid to watch videos on times two speed. Generally, I watch so many videos on times two speed and that is just because if it's a 30 minute video talking about one concept that you don't really understand, just slowing down the parts that you need and the next thing for biology is specifically topic based questions i know on this channel a lot of the times i say oh do exam questions do past papers but i understand that a lot of people do want to save their past papers until when it gets closer to their exam that way you can save them and then do them and get more practice out of them and if you are someone like that then don't be afraid to still do questions but just use these topic specific ones that you can also find on pmt and the reason i say pmt is because of course pmt has everything you'll ever need when it comes to revision in terms of GCSEs and A-levels. But yeah, the topic specific questions that I'll show you on screen now how to get to are super useful. And if you find there's a topic that you're specifically struggling on, rather than doing the entire past papers, you can just go to those topic based specific questions, click on them, do them, and then see how you progress through the normal papers afterwards. The third tip is to use a whiteboard. And whiteboards are my favorite thing in the entire world when it comes to revision. And honestly, you can do so much on them. You can do mind maps, you can do past paper questions on them. Them, and I'm going to show you the ones I have and how I use them and take them on the go just to do revision whenever. So I'm going to have to scooch back a bit to show you guys this because it is a big whiteboard. But this is my main whiteboard that I use for home revision and something I recommend. So number one, you should always get like a really big whiteboard that you can do loads of revision on because they're super, super useful. You can see my ring light in the back and I do loads of revision on that. You can do so much on it. It's super big. And then the second whiteboard I use is over there where you can kind of see me pointing to it. And that is my small portable whiteboard that I take on the go with me. It fits in my backpack and I use it in school and sometimes outside of school or to just write checklists on because it's super useful just having that on the go. And when it gets home and I don't really need it as much because I switched to my larger one, I just use it as having a mini checklist on. And the reason whiteboards are so useful in biology is because of diagrams. And this is the fourth tip I think we're doing now. One, two, three, four. Yeah, fourth tip. And the fourth tip is all about diagrams, specifically when it comes to biology revision, rather than just doing flashcards and repeating information if you're not. Something that I used to do is when it came to like more visual things like learning about the heart, I would draw the heart out and then label it instead of trying to just remember it all in my head. Or when it came to learning digestion or learning about hormones and where all the glands were, I would draw out a body. So that's one of the things I recommend whiteboards for and why you should use diagrams in your revision because this doesn't only apply to visual learners. Generally, for most people, when it comes to revision, you're much more likely to remember pictures or things that you've drawn alongside the words rather than just a big wall of text which you don't really understand and then the next tip for last minute GCSE biology thing that you should do is making a key terms definition sheet if you are someone who hasn't done as much revision coming closer to your exam and you want to do quite a lot in a short amount of time you should go through all the key terms that you need for biology and then pick out the ones you don't understand write them down on a sheet and then add the definition and then just have that as a reference point or something that you can use as a revision sheet or revision guide to just go through and revise and remember and repeat. Super useful and really easy way to remember simple definitions when it comes to biology. And this tip is out there for all those people who aren't so mathematically minded. When it comes to graphs and data interpretation questions or just general calculation questions, spend some time just practicing those instead of just the concept questions. If you're able to interpret a graph and then use the data points to analyze it and then just generally talk about it, that often times gives you quite a few marks because I remember in every single biology paper I did which granted was only two at GCSE I'm pretty sure all of them had some sort of graph question that came up and now for this video as a special little thing I'm gonna go through a graph question and work my way through it and do it with you guys so we get some practice along together okay so this is a really simple graph question all this is asking is using this graph you're gonna describe the change between the estimated number of people with cataracts between 1980 and 2020 and this has millions so just be careful reading the scale the axes it's millions not just 50. okay so we're going to start off the first thing you can immediately say is there's a positive correlation it's increasing great that's one mark done the second thing is 1980 and 2020 so you want to see 2020 there's 175 million be careful of that and then there's 50 million in 1980 175 minus 50 is 125 million so your second mark would be there's 125 million people or increasing and a positive correlation between the graph and since it's described you're not going to explain why this is it's just using the graph and then just describing the data giving those two points 
And then if you check the mark scheme, yeah, positive correlation increases and 125 million people. And if you just say it increases by 125 million, you'll get two marks for that. And now let's go into a bit of a harder graph question. Okay, now a bit of a harder graph question again in paper one biology still. I think this is the 2019 paper for anyone checking it out. But yeah, 5a figure seven shows the activity of enzymes pepsin and trypsin at different pH levels. Describe the trend in the graph for the enzyme trypsin. Use the data from the graph to support your answer. Again, a describe question, but this time it's four marks. So this one has higher stakes and it's for the enzyme trypsin. So immediately you highlight all of that information or just underline it or make a mental note of it. And then you wanna talk about, so first of all, the scale or the axes are, on the x-axis you have pH and on the y-axis you have enzyme activity. So immediately this is telling me you need to compare the relationship between the two. So since it's asking for trypsin, you're gonna first talk about what pH it starts showing the enzyme activity starts so you can tell just over 5.5 pH, pH of 5.5, it starts increasing. Around six, there's a good peak, and then it starts increasing, increasing. There's an upwards trend. The optimum pH would be around pH eight, and then it starts falling off and dropping by 9, 9.5, 10. And just remember, it's asking for trypsin, not pepsin. So you don't have to talk about pepsin in this answer at all. Okay, so your first mark would be a reference to enzyme activity. The enzyme activity increases from pH 5.8 to eight, and then optimum activity at pH eight, enzyme activity decreases between pH eight and 9.8. So of course, if you're reading the axes more carefully than I am right now, the range they're accepting is 5.6 to six for the starter, and then for optimum, just pH eight, because it's so sharp, and then for the decrease, it's between 9.6 to 10. So generally, even if you are 0.1 pH off the answer, they will give you the mark as long as it's in the range. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. I tried to get most of these tips applied to how I did revision back at GCSE or back when it came to biology and even do it now for A-level. So I hope you guys can apply the same sorts of tips for yourself and see a difference in your grades in terms of that. And yeah, I'm rambling now, so I'm gonna go. But if you did enjoy this video, check this video out where I posted last week talking about last minute GCSE tips in general. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week with a brand new one. Bye for now.